Let justice roll down like water, righteousness like a mighty stream, for our grandsons and granddaughters, remember to remember the dream. Welcome to Songs and Stories from Home, as we continue to remember the dream. This week, the times, they are a-changing. As this country moves and jerks and starts to define and redefine the meaning of our founding documents, it's important to know where we came from and so better understand where we are now, and to give us some sense of where we might want to go from here. Are there enough of us today who truly believe we are all created equal with the same inalienable rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness? Can we ever agree that everyone is equally precious in the sight of the Creator? Can there be a consensus in our diverse and divided country that we are indeed one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all? Are there enough of us to hold that truth as self-evident at the same time the President makes it his job to pound into our collective psyche that we are not one nation. My sense is that Mark Twain is right when he says that though history doesn't repeat itself, it does rhyme. There are certainly enough rhymes connecting the presidential election season of 1968 and the one we are going through now in 2020. As then, the streets are alive and sometimes ablaze with people who for too long have believed that they have not been treated equally or fairly. Who I believe have not been treated equally or fairly. And now, as then, one major presidential candidate spouts fear, shouts law and order, and warns us the American way of life is under attack. The other presidential candidate in 1968, it was Hubert Humphrey, the happy warrior appeals to our better nature and the dream that it's not too late to create a more perfect union out of the raw material that is America. Fifty-two years ago, we voted our fears and not our hopes. By doing so, we ended up with someone, Richard Nixon, who forever appealed to our fears until his corruption became so clear we could not not see it. And an exhausted nation said, enough. We have a chance to do it differently in the coming election, inspired in part by the life and legacy of John Lewis, who was part of so many moments in the civil rights movement who never stopped believing in this country and our better angels who never stopped preaching or practicing nonviolence no matter how badly he was beaten or no matter how loudly others spoke of meeting violence with violence. One hundred years and three days before John Lewis walked across the Edmund Pettus Bridge and changed American history, Abraham Lincoln spoke to the nation and speaks to us today, saying in part, with malice toward none, with charity for all, with firmness in the right as God gives us to see the right. Let us strive on to finish the work we are in, to bind up the nation's wounds, to do all which may achieve and cherish a just and lasting peace among ourselves and with all nations. Let justice roll down like water, righteousness like a mighty stream, for our grandsons and granddaughters, remember to remember the dream. On June 5th, 1966, James Meredith,
who a few years earlier had integrated the University of Mississippi, began what he called a march against fear. His intention was to make a solitary 220-mile walk from Memphis to Jackson to point out racism that continued in, in the Mississippi Delta while encouraging more African Americans to register to vote. And on the second day, he was shot. He survived, but couldn't continue. Others, including prominent civil rights activists, finished the walk for him. New SNCC chairman Stokely Carmichael was one of them. And one night in a park in Greenwood, Mississippi, he gave a speech where he used the term black power for the first time. On the pilgrimage, we went to that park. And when we were there, Bob Zellner told us that Carmichael liked the spotlight so much his friends used to call him Star Michael. <laughs> it's the little things that make historical moments come alive. Later, on December, in December of 1966, white members were asked to leave SNCC, along with Bob Zellner, if you can believe it. And two years later, the group changed its name from the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee to the Student National Coordinating Committee. Language, as well as attitudes around the freedom struggle, were changing. On April 4th, 1967, a year to the day before he was murdered and 15 months after SNCC proclaimed their opposition to the Vietnam War, Dr. King gave his Beyond Vietnam speech, inspired in part by Muhammad Ali's refusal for religious reasons to avoid the draft. King's words parallel those taught at Highlander, stating we must try to see beyond race and make fundamental changes in the political and economic life of our nation. King was harshly criticized. Seen as simply an anti-Vietnam War speech, he lost the support of many, most prominently the President of the United States. Come gather around people wherever you roam. Admit that the waters around you have grown and accept it that soon you'll be drenched to the bone. If your time to you is or save it, then you better start swimming or else sink like the stone. The times that you wear that change. The times that they are a change. 